I'm Savannah, this is Cleaver Cooking, and today we are making butternut apple soup. So I think it's the most boring thing when you take bland butternut squash, and then you dump some bland heavy cream into it, then you serve it to people with some more bland heavy cream poured on the top of it. It just doesn't speak to me. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today, okay? This is 4759. I just looked up a random butternut squash PLU. You can name them if you want, throw a name down there in the comments, but I would recommend not getting attached. Y'all seen Veggie Tales? It's the PG-13 version. Um, what we're gonna do is preheat your oven to 425 degrees and... Ouch! Ow! Ow! Ouch! Ah! Ah! Veggie tears, veggie tears. <laughs> Broccoli, celery, collard greens, veggie tails. You know, we actually have an entire video on how to dice a butternut squash. So if you need extra help with that, you can go over there. Just gonna knock the ends off. Just gonna, here we go. That's a little small. We don't have to go quite that small. This one's different. Okay, so. In my previous butternut squash experiences, I have oft opted to just leave the peel on, lop the sucker in half, rub it with a little oil and salt, and throw it cut side down in the oven. <sighs> you totally can do that, but the thing is, like, we're gonna dice it up because we want caramelization on all the little pieces. It's gonna give us more flavor for the soup. But you know what, sometimes you don't always have the energy for that, so do what your heart tells you. So dice it up, get a bowl, and just, you know, cut it in chunks. What you do is you just go. I'm just kidding, that's bullshit. Stand here and you chop it until it's done. Those are not the same size at all. What do you call it when you score a, a touchdown? Boards. <laughs> what do you yell in the stands when you win a field goal? <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna take a little oil, neutral oil. I use grapeseed, you can use whatever you got really. Salt, salt. I just reorganized the kitchen and I have no clue where anything is. Pepper. Go ahead and diagnose yourself with tendonitis now. Impending tendonitis? I'm gonna diagnose myself with impending tendonitis. Yeah, baby, none of that. Spread it out on the sheet pan, then you drizzle some oil and it's good. You get like, what, one in three? Onto a parchment lined sheet pan. Spread her out. Examine the amazing job that you did getting this all the exact same size. Anyways, roast this for like 20, 25 minutes until it's like tender when you stick it with a little fork. All right, so while the squash is roasting, we are going to heat up a pot here. And we're just gonna put like some oil in the bottom of it. You wanna do be generous with the oil. You know, you want like a little bit of floating in there. Heat that up to about 350. We're gonna take our sage leaves, okay? And just pluck them off the stem. That tiny amount of oil is not gonna take very long to heat up on a gas burner, or any burner really, don't walk away. That's how fires start. I think we're good. Okay, so you're gonna take your little sagers, plop them in, oop, yep, it's good, it's good. Let it fry. Find your little slotted spoon and, you know, plate with a paper towel or something. These don't need to go very long. Soon as they start to turn a slightly off color, shut off your heat. On to the paper towel. Yeah, the definite better way to do this would have been to pour it through a colander into a bowl. But you know, we're really committed at this point, so. Okay, and while it's still hot, sprinkle it with a bit of salt. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, we're just gonna let it hang out. Perfect. Then, find a squeezy bottle, a bowl, whatever you got. 
very carefully. You should probably let this cool before you put it directly into the squeezy bottle. Because now you got some sage oil. Woo hoo hoo! Yeah, definitely let that cool before you put it in the squeezy bottle. Uh oh. We've made a huge mistake. We're gonna redo that whole little spot. <laughs> Shh, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. It's not fine. It's trash. All right, so then you take your oil, we're gonna pour it into a little bowl. Be very careful. And you can leave a little bit behind, okay? I'm just gonna scooch that to the side there. And you've just made sage oil. It's fantastic. All right, take your onion. We're just gonna slice it up real nice. Rid of the papers. We're just looking for kind of a thin slice. All right, so we got a little of the residual oil in there. Fantastic, it's still nice and ripping hot. Just slice up this onion kind of thin because we don't have, you know, forever to sit here and watch it cook. Yep, 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 steady. All right. Yeah, I've had the pan off this entire time and it's still sizzling because it's so hot. So now what we can do Ah, it's in the eyeballs. Woohoo! Very carefully, just add a little bit more of that sage oil in there. Yeah, it's perfect. Heat back on. We're gonna saute the onion. It's like a medium, medium high heat. A little bit of salt. All right, so now we're gonna get an apple. You could also do this with a ripe pear, and that would be lovely. Just peel the apple. She really don't want, and like a beautiful velvety butternut squash soup, take a, a sip and then there's like, so then you have to chew. It's not what we're going for. Add oil as needed, steady, very hot. And we're just gonna dice up this apple. Now, avoid the core. Wow, Savannah, excellent work this evening. I just become a baker now, all my knife skills are null and void. Should never do this. Should definitely, well, it's maybe it's not safer. Don't do it. There we go. Cube it up. I like to go on kind of a fine dice on the apple because, you know, it's almost nine o'clock. I am hungry. In it goes. A little bit of salt. Saute that around. At this point, we can add a bit of fresh cracked pep. Okay. What else? Hmm. It's about it, friends. We're just gonna hang out and let these saute, caramelize a bit, let our squash in the oven caramelize a bit, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so. We have our nutter butt squash. Just check and make sure it's like nice and tender all the way through. I'm thinking this plus this might be too much for one round in the blender. So we're gonna dig out a bowl here, dirty a dish, which I hate to do, but you know, it's just, it is what it is. And put like approximately half of it in there. And then actually, because this is gonna be easier, go ahead and put that half in the blender and then do this again. Or however, it's your life, it's your kitchen, it's your 9.30 p.m. dinner. There we go. Now we're going to do the same thing with this, which because it's almost 9.30 p.m. I had the heat up a little too high. You wanna go a little slower than this, get a nice caramel on it instead of this kind of darker brown. But you know, if it's also 9.30 p.m. where you live, it's still gonna be good if you sped it up a little bit. Put some of that stuff in there. Okay, put the rest of that stuff in here. No longer have the luxury of going from the bowl to the thing because we don't. Good enough. Save this. Save this. Okay. Now, you're going to anticipatorily, I think that's a word, add some salt. Got some veggie stock here that I just warmed up a little bit. Add a little bit of that. Oh, you know what? It might be able to hold all of it at once. 
We're committed at this point. Plus, who knows how much stock it's gonna need. Not really brings it up. Yep, yep. bother. Added too much stock too fast. You want to grind it up a little bit before you add too much stock so it gets properly emulsified. There we go. Do you notice it got, th it got thicker? Just excellent. Let's give her a little, a little try here. Mmm. Oh, it's nice. But you know what I'm going to add? Some salt as per usual bit more of stock in there just a bit because when it finally ground up all of that it actually thickened it up a wee bitsy start on low it's a big surprise if you've left the dial turned to high and you turn the blender on so kaboom okay while that's going we're going to stream in a bit of this oil it's totally optional however the fat kind of adds flavor it nice and velvety Mmm, I like it. I think, yeah, just a titch more salt and we're there. Could add a bit of lemon zest if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna dig a lemon out of the fridge. That sounds like too much work. Into the pot. Oh yeah. I'm gonna do the same shit with the rest of it. Oh, what a disaster. It was hot, very hot. We can put the rest of the salt in there. What else goes in here? Stock. Nope, not so much yet. Here, ready? Start. There we go. Come on. You bastard. Air bubble. Why me, God? Aha. It would appear we need two quarts of stock, excuse me. Okay. Yep. This is going very well. I'm gonna take this and just. you doing in batches. Mmm. Needs a little salt. Just gonna let's get ourselves organized here. Give her for one last little hurrah. Okay. This makes a lot of soup, you know, depending on how large your nutter butter was. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, dependent on whether you took the time to warm up your stock or if you had to dig some more out of the cold, cold fridge, you might want to reheat this. I'm gonna do just a little. Then we'll tidy this mess up because this is a disgrace. All right, so then we're just gonna serve some of this up here. Oh yeah, that's nice. One more, just one more. Now, if we had not melted our squeezy bottle with the hot, hot oil, we could have put this in there and drizzled it on. But since we did, take a little bit of that oil and just shoop, drizzle her on there. Take some of these crispy sage leaves, crumble them on there as well. All right, my friends, that is 9.30 o'clock p.m. butternut apple soup. Thank you so much for watching. Um, oh no. <laughs> This is butternut apple fucking soup. It's 9.30 p.m. at night, so I'm gonna go eat this soup and you should subscribe!
Thank you.